we're going to help you out with common mistakes that you'll probably run into when going for interstellar i've been able to unlock it over here for multiplayer and then i've also done the zombies one so if you're interested in a guide on the zombies one let me know in the comments pretty much i'm going to go ahead and focus on one of the most important challenges that a lot of people mistake with as soon as you get the rgl you got to use it and level it up so that you can actually start getting camos for this thing this is probably one of the biggest mistakes you'll make early on and eventually once you do a lot of the camos you'll hit a roadblock and go how the heck am i supposed to do this and you'll be doing this for a long time this is something you got to do passively so as soon as you get to level four get your 25 kills immediately go to hardcore try to spam this get your 25 kills and that'll get you to this one and you can do this in core just go direct impact people and you'll get your 10 that's the most important part to start off with for this camo if you plan to try and get this camo within the next few weeks obviously once they add a new gun in season one you could skip this one entirely and replace it with whatever gun they add into the game and do those challenges because typically you need 36 priceless camos you could actually skip a few once they start adding weapons into the game so the important part for this is to destroy enemy equipment so pretty much every Every class you're going to have you're going to have this one set up so that you'll have it there and you're going to be using the mcw and doing the camo challenges on that and then you're doing the camo challenges you're going through various guns and then anytime you see equipment you can just swap to your rgl and destroy it and i was able to get about 19 by the time i needed this and then i finished this one off in free for all i just went in free for all and said hey please can somebody use claymores so that i can do the camos and and after a couple matches there was a people that were actually happy to help because they had the same issue so you can definitely do that one don't be afraid to open your mic if you want to try and get help that one to clear that one out pretty easily and then you got the double kills ideally hardcore rust would be the way to go and that is one of the biggest mistakes putting this off too late so there's three different lmgs that you need penetration kills and then when you actually use the sniper you'll also have to have penetration kills and there's a lot of maps that are going to be good for it i'll give you a few examples but this is by far one of the easiest in my opinion especially if you're playing domination since the b flag sits here you can just sit here and shoot people as they come across and wall bang them it will count as a wall bang if you want to go ahead and change angles you can do that and still shoot here if they're up in the window and each of those will count as a wall bang if the spawns happen to flip and then now you're facing this way you can do the same thing and shoot this door as people come through and you can see how the bullets are like ricocheting off the vents or whatever making that little spark that's when you're getting the wall bangs you could also change the angle if you want to come through here as they come through maybe catch them as they come through there this is by far the easiest but i'll still give you a couple examples because obviously this map won't be 100 percent of your map choices also anytime somebody is on a head glitch you could try to wall bang odds are people will shoot you a little bit faster and kill you you could still do that so it, it can happen but right here is another one that is amazing especially with the b flag you know if the enemy team is coming around the a side they're coming through here pretty much all you have to do is just strafe this and as soon as you see someone you can wall bank and you will get hit markers relatively easily in that area obviously a hardcore you'd need less bullets you could set up your class so that it actually has bullet penetration especially on the ammo that will be an option where you can do the bullet penetration um that'll go there and that'll make it so you lose less damage by going through an object so instead of going up to like five or six shots to kill it'll still be close to the normal ttk and that's kind of how you would do those ones also any piece of glass on any map uh, you can have like on terminal the first bullet that goes through will count as a penetration kill. So it doesn't really work with the fully automatic, but there are some sniper penetration kills. Those can work if you're ADSing it and then you get the first shot, the bullet goes through and kills the person, it will count as a penetration kill. There's also this weird challenge that doesn't really explain it very well. This one, you need to get 25 kills while ADS and fully loaded with the longbow, but it doesn't really explain what fully loaded is. Pretty much all you need to do for this challenge is make sure you change your equipment vest to the gunner vest and this will deploy with max ammo so for the fully loaded part you can see on the bottom right i have my 30 bullets in my magazine but i also have 200 in reserve and that's the part that's important as long as that number's at 200 every kill that you get will actually count towards this so pretty much if i just go ahead and never reload all the kills will count the second i go to reload 
boom, now it will not count. You can go ahead and fix this with the munitions or field upgrade, but ideally what I would say is, and what I did, is I just started first life if I died, which is pretty easy to do when you're sniping, at least before the 30 bullets are gone, is never reload. Basically, that was my strat. All right, boom. All right, go ahead and kill me. I'm gonna spawn back in. My mag's gonna be full till you get your full 25 ADS kills, and then you're gonna be pretty much good to go. And I kind of talked about it earlier, but what makes that uh, RGL challenge destroying equipment a little bit harder is so many people are running engineer vest. And the reason for that is because the engineer vest is probably the best thing you can use when you need to get your kills with a tactical. See, I get two tacticals, Plus I get the munitions there. So I'm gonna have that all set up. And as a result of running double stun, they don't have a lethal to place. Um, so that can make it a little bit trickier. And that's why I said free for all is a good way to go on that challenge because then you can ask people to maybe switch because uh, they organically will not place bouncing Bettys or the proximity mines and claymores, which are pretty much the only two things that are gonna count for that individual challenge. So this stun one, it pretty much how it works is I would recommend pairing this with another weapon. In case you get both of the kills, you're gonna be out of stuns and you're not gonna be able to get any more kills with this until your field upgrade uh, comes back. So what I'd recommend doing is combining this with maybe your pistol if you have some of these guns. And pretty much how this one works is you have to go ahead and get the stun. If you don't get a hit marker, it's not gonna count. So you have to get a hit marker where it pops up on screen, even if it's a, you got to get it there. Boom, we got a hit marker, we get the kill, and then that will count. There's no visual notification that's going to pop up that says, ooh, you hit somebody that was stunned. You're going to have to actually throw the stun, hit them, and then wait for it to go off, which sucks because a lot of times you can get killed pretty quickly. You can usually see them as they come around. So a lot of times you could throw it into buildings. You'll get definitely good at, see right here, I can't do anything with this gun. That's when I would swap to my other gun. And that's what would allow me to actually work on the other camo. So you can kind of not wait to die, not worry about resetting. You can actually do multiple camos at once, especially if they're leveled. So what we're gonna do is watch to see the operator skin. Now we're gonna be focusing on revenge kills. What we're gonna do is get killed by this player here. And then we're gonna come back for a revenge kill. And ideally you wanna go ahead and kinda of know where the person's at. Sometimes this works on a bigger map, especially if somebody's camping pretty hard. Maybe you can go for a flank. And what'll happen is you'll know this one tracks when you get the kill and on the screen it'll pop up with revenge. It only works the one time, so you might wanna die. This one's gonna cause you to die quite a bit because part of it involves you actually dying to get the kill. So we'll go ahead and come through here. We'll die over here. What I'll do now is I can go ahead and kill other players on the way. So if I kill this guy, it's not going to pop up with revenge. And then I can go ahead and run over here and get this kill. Obviously, we're in a private match. This is way easier than it would be. And then it still pops up with revenge. So that's kind of how the revenge kills will work. The other one is tax stance. It's not as obvious as it was during the beta, and it is a brand new feature. Uh, pretty much what you're going to do is hold aim down sight and on the bottom right underneath the gun you can see you could toggle between aim down sight and tag stance anything that's a tag stance you'll have to be in this position and you can actually build out the guns to build that way and i do recommend that for for some of the challenges where you do have to hit fire i i, I wouldn't focus on trying to do these things passively who cares about your stats unless you're a stat person i, I maybe camo grinding isn't for you if you're worried about your stats you're going to be very disappointed by the end of it if uh, you're going for camos. It's just going to take much longer. If you just want to get in, get out, get it done, and then start, you know, quote unquote, playing the game, you can do that. But I would focus 100% on the challenges. So if you were doing a hip fire build, the game has made it really, really easy to build your class, even without having to read any of the descriptors. So for example, if I wanted to only focus on hip fire, what I can do is toggle on the show details, which is over here where the one is, but we'll go ahead and press it with L2. What we can do is specifically look in this area for hip fire spread, hip fire spread max. This is while you're moving. And then we have tactical stance. So if you want to solve for tactical stance, you just look for everything that's going to improve that. So what I can do is toggle through here and what we'll do is see if any of these improve tax stance. That's by 20%. That one's pretty huge. Um, and then that'll allow us to go ahead and see what's going to be the best for tax stance. It looks like only one attachment does it. And we'll go ahead and equip that one on. If I go to barrel, I can go ahead and see the same thing. Ooh, 35% huge. 
We can go ahead and go here. 16%, 14, 26%. We'll put on the 26% and probably go no stock or something like that. And that gives us an additional, this SVA's factory. So we actually got that stat down to 0.7 whatever degrees. And that's actually tighter than the hip fire when we're in tax stand. So it'll be a very much a dot when we're trying to go for that. If you want to do the hip fire spread, you could do the exact same thing. Um, and then, like I said, we would talk a little bit about um, optics. So if you need a higher zoom optic, there's two optics that I like. And they're in the 2.5X. We have this one, which is the KR Mortis Precision 2.5X, as well as the Corial Eagle's Eye 2.5X. This one looks a lot like the VLK in terms of the crosshairs, where it's just the T-pose. Uh, and then this one does have a red dot. So we can go ahead and check those out. This is how this one will look. It does have a little bit of blockage on the top. So that's one reason why I like the Corio, but Red Dot is pretty solid, right? So this one, not as much blockage, pretty clean visuals. So luckily the game's done away with long shots for the most part. There are a few guns that have them. If it's a sniper, it's 50 meters, 38 meters for rifles and LMGs. SMGs are 30, pistols are 20, and then 12 uh, for the uh, shotguns. But what I did want to point out is one of the most important challenges that you'll come up against is the three kills in one mag. And this one's currently bugged. Hopefully it works at some point differently the way you expect it. But this one's actually super easy. Pretty much it's just multiples of three reload. So I'll give you an example here. You would think we got one kill. Now I've died. So on the scoreboard, we still have one kill. If I get two more kills, then I will reload. So there's one. And then we'll go ahead and get two over here. All right. I haven't reloaded yet, but let's say this happens and then I die, right? I would have reloaded, but for the purpose of demonstrating this, I'm going to die right now. So I've counted one to three kills in one mag already, even though I've died twice to reset it properly, make sure it works, boom, and it'll work every single time, exactly like that. Then if I go ahead and get three kills, one, two, and we'll go ahead and get the third over here. We got the third, and then we can go ahead and reload. That will also count. Multiples of three will count. So realistically, when it says you need three kills without dying 10 times, that's one, two. Essentially, you need 30 kills in the match. If you get 30 kills in the match, the camo will be done for that challenge, no matter how many times you died. So there, I just died. I got three. What I would do to make sure it resets, get my reload in. We're good to go. We're up to nine. And although it's not very clear, there is kind of a weird challenge uh, in here where it says to get clean kills. And essentially a clean kill right here, it says 15 suppressed to clean kills with the MCW 6.8. And essentially what a clean kill is, is something that pops up clean within the kill feed. It's basically the name, the gun, the name, that's it. Not bullet penetration kills, not headshots, not any other weird things that pop up in the kill feed. Literally name, gun, name. That is what they consider a clean kill. So I typically play hardcore for that. Just aim for the body, get 15 kills and you're done. So when it comes to the creative class, this is what I used 99% of my time playing once I had access to the specific gear and everything. I used the engineer vest so I could get the double tacticals when I was doing those challenges. I was using the munitions to resupply that along with the RGL. And then you're able to see the explosives through the walls if you wanna go ahead and blow those up. I was using commando gloves Loves. This ended up being uh, so I could reload while sprinting, uh, which feels amazing. There's not really too many good ones in here, in my opinion. Uh, maybe scavenger gloves if you're going on streaks, but typically when you're doing your camos, you're not really going on streaks other than the ones that say go get a bloodthirsty or three kills without dying or, or whatever the case is. I use the covert sneakers just so I can go around and flank. Some of the challenges required to shoot players in the back.
this helps. Ghost is very good in this as long as you're able to move. And I was moving to try and get a lot of these challenges done and flanking helps with that. And then the bone conduction headset. So that's pretty much my main go-tos for the overall challenge. In terms of stats, I was able to do it in 28 hours and I had a little over a 2 KD. Obviously, some guns are going to be better than others. Maps, playing a party. There's a lot of different variables to get this done. Good luck in your grind. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.